we're going to examine designing a controller using state space methods. When designing a PID controller, for example, this effectively places the poles of the system. And we're going to look at how to place poles of a system using state space methods. In this presentation, we'll go over feedback, except with state variables, the characteristic equation for systems with state space representation, looking at feedback with the phase variables, which we know are a special type of state variables, and then the pole placement method. <coughs> Before jumping to an example or finishing with an example, we'll review the general second order system. First of all, let's consider a plant that has this state space representation. And here is the, a block diagram showing this. So this is a single input, single output system. The thin lines represent scalars and the bold lines or thick lines represent vectors. So this is a block diagram of this state space representation. Now, in classical controls, we would feed back the output to a summing junction, and the difference between the input and the output roughly was the error. But now we're going to feed back something based on the state variables, as shown here. And what we're feeding back is the product of this gain matrix K and the state vector X. So here's the resulting block diagram. And the resulting state space representation is shown here. So we have AX plus AX bar plus BU as before, but now U is the sum of R and this feedback signal. So that's um, negative K times X bar plus R. So that's U. And then rearranging, we get this equation for our state equation. The output equation is unchanged. It's still the C matrix times the state vector. So this difference here is our new state matrix. One thing to note is that since we are dealing with single input, single output systems, that means that K is a row vector because we're going to add the product of K and X to the input. So this is what K looks like. It's a row vector having N components. And the attractive thing about this approach is that we now have N gains to adjust that allow us to adjust all the pole locations. This is different from, say, a PID controller where we have three parameters to adjust. So we can't place all the poles with a PID controller. Now, talking about placing the poles, this brings us to the characteristic equation. A system's characteristic equation is what determines its natural response. For example, the roots of the transfer function denominator for a system. Those roots are the roots of the character, or the solve the characteristic equation. We can also express the characteristic equation using the state matrix. So here it is, determinant of S times identity matrix minus the state matrix. And that determinant is equal to zero. This is the characteristic equation. So for example, let's use this to check the stability of a system with this state space representation. So here's the state equation and the output equation. We're going to use the state matrix A. So we have the determinant of S times I minus A, and that's shown here. So we have S times I, and then subtract from that A. And if we go ahead and calculate this determinant, we get this third order poly polynomial and set that equal to zero, and we have the characteristic equation for this system. Now we want to check the stability, so that means see if the real part of the roots is less than zero or not. So the roots to this equation are 7.76 and then the pair 0 0.882 plus or minus j times 2.43. Since this is in the right half of the S plane, then the system is unstable. We're going to use the pole placement method for systems with the phase variable form of the state space representation. Now we know that the state matrix for a system in phase variable form looks like this. You have the soft diagonal um, of ones and then the negative coefficients of the characteristic equation on the bottom row. So in this example, we're just going to do a third order system. We're going to examine the state matrix when we have feedback of phase variables, so A minus BK.
here is A for a system in phase variable form and B for a uh, state space representation for a system in phase variable form and K for a third order system single input now the product of B and K looks like this we just have K on the bottom row so A minus K is shown here the characteristic equation for this system it will be using is something we'll be using later and the determinant of this matrix is easy to calculate so the determinant of I'm sorry the determinant of SI minus the state matrix which is shown here is calculated like this so the coefficients are a2 plus k3 a1 plus k2 roughly it's ai plus ki plus 1 now the process that we're going to use for pole placement in plants that are represented in phase variable form is as follows choosing feedback gains that's how we're going to place the poles we want to design our controller meaning we want to choose the gains for our feedback first step is to represent the plant in phase variable form just because that makes the math simpler the second step once we have this system we want to feed back the product of the gain matrix K and the phase variables the third step is to find the characteristic equation for the resulting system so this system with phase variable feedback we would find the characteristic equation for it and this is the equation that was at the bottom of the previous screen so here it is in for an nth order system we just have the coefficients as shown here the fourth step out of five is to identify the desired closed loop character characteristic equation that is if we know where we want the poles to be then find the characteristic equation for that system and finally once we have these two equations we will equate the like coefficients and then solve for the gains so for the ith coefficient we have we're equating di to ai plus ki plus one for example d1 we set these coefficients equal the s to the one coefficients so we have a plus or a sub one plus k sub two is equal to d sub one and then we just solve for k sub two or k sub i plus one now before we get into an example let's look briefly at second order systems and the reason we're going to do this is because it's useful in determining the desired poles higher order high order systems so systems with more than two poles have complicated transient response and because of that we oftentimes choose the desired poles based on the second order approximation and that means that we're going to choose the location of the two dominant poles the two dominant poles are the ones that are closest to the imaginary axis the poles um, that have the largest real component so these are the dominant poles and we'll choose the location of those two based on the desired transient response using a second order approximation and then if there are more than two poles we will want them to be at least five times farther from the imaginary axis than these dominant poles and that's a rule of thumb so that the effect of these other poles will die out much more quickly than the dominant poles if there are any zeros we can also use the other poles to cancel the zeros so that we can keep our second order approximation here's the transient response for a second order system and there are several parameters that are used to describe it such as settling time for a general second order system here's the characteristic equation a and b are the coefficients the natural frequency for this system is the square root of b the damping ratio is a over 2 divided by natural frequency so here's the characteristic equation rewritten in terms of damping ratio and natural frequency here are the roots of the characteristic equation in terms of damping ratio and natural frequency 
and say we're given a couple of performance or transient parameters such as percent overshoot here it is in terms of the damping ratio we can solve for damping ratio if we're given the desired transient response and percent overshoot and likewise here's settling time you see it's in terms of damping ratio and natural frequency so we can use these the transient response behavior that we want in order to get zeta and omega n which will give us the desired characteristic equation or the two of the desired poles and these will be the dominant poles like I said earlier so on to one example we want to design a controller that will yield 8% overshoot and a settling time of 0.84 seconds for the plant with this transfer function. We're going to use phase variable feedback. So our first step in the pole placement process is to represent this plant in phase variable form. So if we expand the denominator, we get a third order system. So we have, uh, we have three state variables and the coefficients of the characteristic equation are shown here. We have 6, 8, and 0. And then expanding the numerator, we get these coefficients and they go into the output equation. So that's step one. Step two is to feed back the phase variables. So our resulting state matrix A minus BK is shown here. And then we f find the characteristic equation for this resulting system. So that is shown in this line. Now, step four is to calculate our desired characteristic equation. So the characteristic equation of a system that has poles where we want them to be. So we have three poles to place for this third order system. We're going to put one of them at negative three to cancel out this zero. And then the other two poles are based on the transient response. So 8% overshoot gives us a damping ratio of 0.627. Combine that with the settling time of 0.84 seconds, we get a natural frequency of 7.6. So these three pieces give us this characteristic equation. Here's the pole at negative 3, and here is the quadratic from the transient response. And if we expand that, then we get this we set that equal to what we found from the determinant of SI minus our state matrix and we set the like terms equal so for the S squared coefficients we have 6 plus K3 and that we want that to be equal to 12.5 um, and in phase variable form um, that is going to be a coefficient for X3 so we have that here in our K matrix and 8 plus K2 is equal to 86.3 so we have that as a coefficient for X2 in our K matrix and then the constant term K1 is equal to 173 and the reason there is no it's just K1 is because here we had a 0 so K1 is equal to 173 so that gives us the gains 173, 78.3 and 6.5. This was a look at how to place all of the poles for a system that is represented in phase variable form.